Hello and welcome back Fred in the Shed radio video. Now this one is all about my Zatagi TM999 meter. This has been requested I think, or oh, must have been at least three, possibly four times. People are interested in this, they see it in my videos. And would I go into a little bit more detail and explain what it does. So this is what this one's all about. I apologise in advance for the uh, reg regular, more experienced radio guys. You'll know all this already, you probably know more than me anyway. So this, this video is kind of aimed at the newbies, the new guys and girls coming on to sort of CB that want to learn as much as they can so <laughs> apologize I'm not trying to tell anyone how to suck eggs right so this is a meter that you put between your radio and your antenna and it has three functions it's multifunctional first it is a pretty sort of basic SWR standing wave ratio meter also a power meter so you can monitor your radio's output and then it has a built-in antenna tuner or antenna matcher which we'll go into a little bit more detail in a moment now most like most of the target stuff it's aimed purely at the sort of cb market it operates on a frequency of 26 to 28 megs so that covers the 11 meters the maximum power handling power is 100 watts am fm and 200 watts on sideband now the SWR meter itself it's not the most accurate thing in the world um, it has a 5% plus and minus and also on the power meter it's 10% uh, plus and minus so it's not the last word in kind of accuracy <laughs> and quality which is a bit like you know a lot of the, the cheaper Satagi stuff you know tends to be a little bit like that but it is priced on a budget and weight wise if you were going to take this mobile it weighs just over half a kilogram now, you know, in this video, I don't want to get too involved in what is SWR and how to adjust your antenna. But just to say that I do get comments from new people coming on and they buy quite often a mobile setup, you know, the all-in-one kind of thing, the TTI or the, or the Cobra thing, where you get a small little quad of mag mount, normally a springy type antenna. And I've had a few comments, people said, oh, you know, I've put it on and I'm not doing very well. And I'll say, well, have you checked the SWR? And they'll come back and say, no, no, the antenna is pre-tuned. I don't need to check it. Well, yeah, you do. I mean, any any antenna, um, especially a mobile, where you put it all around different places on a vehicle, maybe on a roof, front and back, you, you know, you do need to adjust the SWR just to fine tune the uh, antenna, not only to improve your signal output and hopefully improve your range, but also for the safety of your radio, because you can damage your radio if your SWR is too high. Now, a lot of modern radios do come with a built-in SWR meter, and that's absolutely fine. Personally, I'm a little bit old-fashioned, and I like to use a separate SWR meter just to sort of double check. As I say, you know, you can end up damaging the uh, the radio. But as I say, I'm not going. There's loads of um, videos on YouTube adjusting SWR mobile antennas and base station antennas. They're they're pretty much um, all the same in the respect that you normally end up having to sort of lower or raise the whip element of a mobile antenna or perhaps the tip of a base station antenna but things like the Antron for example is a little bit more complicated whereas you've got two rings but I'm not going to go into that in too much detail but what do you do if you set up your radio antenna and you just cannot for whatever reason you cannot get the SWR down to a safe level you know you can't you then you then stuck you can't use the radio because you risk damaging the unit so as a last resort you would use an antenna matcher or an antenna tuner, which is what the Zatagi TM999 is main function is. And really, yeah, in a nutshell, it's just for matching your antenna to the radio to reduce the SWR to a safe level so you don't end up damaging the equipment. Now, despite its name uh, being an antenna matcher or certainly an antenna tuner, um, it doesn't actually <laughs> tune the antenna at all. I suppose if you fitted the tuner at the end of your coaxial feed right directly below your antenna so base station yeah maybe then I suppose it would be sort of tuning but uh, no it's not in effect tuning the antenna so if you're not tuning the antenna well what are you doing well, what you're doing in fact you're balancing the impedance uh, don't want to get too technical but basically when you key up your radio your radio transmits your signal via power and that goes through a resistive load which is a 50 ohm coaxial cable and it reaches your antenna now if you've got your SWR you know, on a we we'll say ideally on a one-to-one -one, that is in perfect tune 
with your transmitting frequency that the radio is producing so everything is balanced there but you know it's not an ideal world and certainly if you perhaps you're on a mobile setup as well and you've got maybe not enough ground plane your chances of getting a one-to-one -one SWR without a hell of a load of fiddling um, you know is pretty much impossible so you get a slight imbalance now if you know if people get a bit anal about SWR certainly when they start out everyone wants a one-to-one -one or you know, but it's, it is quite difficult to achieve I would say you know if your SWR is say one between one to one and one to five um, you know I would say that's that's okay if you want to play for it for a few hours and get it down even lower we all do that I know but that's okay but when, when it starts creeping up when you start to get between say 2.5 and certainly over 3 that's when you're in trouble that's when a lot of that reflective power is then coming back from the antenna and going into the radio so in effect all you're doing is you know some of your transmit power is pretty much sort of uh, heating up the coax in a way you know you, you, you've not got a matched impedance and as I say it can cause damage to the radio and that's when the uh, the matcher or the tuner comes into place it's sort of like your last resort if you if you are SWR is just too high and you know you're going to cause or cause damage this is your last resort to bring that SWR down so it keeps the radio happy and means that you can uh, use the radio and carry on transmitting so I hope that doesn't sound too complicated it's easier when I demonstrate it which I will do in a minute um, but you know, for those of you that have watched my videos, I know I've had a few comments. People have seen my Satagi uh, TM999. It sits above my Yaesu 450 up in the main sort of uh, main shack. And you'll see this um, bounce all over the place when I'm transmitting on sideband. And a couple of, well, more than a couple of people have commented and said, Fred, you know, hang on, your SWR is going into the red. You need to adjust that. Well, I, I don't use it as an SWR meter in the main shack um, because I've got the, using the ASU 450 there, like most modern HF radios, they come with a built-in antenna tuner. And it's just like magic. You know, you connect your antenna, you press a button, and the radio automatically gives you a one-to-one -one SWR. So when I use it in the shack, what you're seeing, I'm using it purely as a power meter, just so I can monitor the power coming out of the radio. And the reason that it's flicking all over and bouncing all over the place is because mostly you'll see I'm on sideband, and when you're on sideband, there's no carrier wave to your transmitted signal. So you've only got the power of your voice and the power of your transmit will go up and down with the, uh, the volume of your voice. So it's all about basically volume of voice when you're on sideband. Right, okay, this is the setup for today. I'm gonna to be using this little PSU power supply. It's 30 amp here. There's a video for this on my channel. Radio wise, going to be using the SS CRT 6900N, and then we've got the Satagi TM999 sitting on top. All that's going to be dumped into a 150 watt dummy load there, sent in by Gary a while ago. So, uh, cheers, Gary. Thanks for that. As you can see, I'm still using it. First thing we're going to do is just do a basic SWR check. Now, most SWR meters are pretty much the same. If you look on it, you'll find a little switch that normally says forward or reference or for and ref then what you need to do is you need to switch that over to the forward setting then you key up the microphone to transmit and then there's normally a little adjustment pot and then you need to adjust the needle right the way over to the right hand side to the end of the scale where there's normally an infinity mark or an adjustment mark once you've got that adjusted you can then flick that switch to the reference or ref setting and then key up the radio again and then you can read off your SWR. Now because we're using a balanced 50, uh, 50 ohm sort of dummy load here my SWR is sort of quite low. But for the sake of this video let, let's imagine we've set up our antenna maybe we're mobile and we've tried to adjust our SWR the best we can but we can't get it perhaps below two and a half and it's it's getting on up to three on the higher bands so we need to adjust that make it lower make it sort of safe so this is where the matcher comes in place because when we switch that on we've got these two additional little pots here to the right and uh, as we adjust those they work sort of simultaneously together you'll notice that we can then tune the SWR down and it's just a case of very very finely tuning these pots getting them balanced and to get the needle as low as possible and hopefully we can get it down to pretty much a one-to-one -one SWR. So 
right now I know what some of you newer guys and girls are thinking you know well why do I keep going outside and raising and lowering my SWR when I could buy one of these little magic boxes and it will do it all for me <laughs> but like most things in life there's no such thing as a free lunch it does come at a slight cost and let me explain that that cost is unfortunately part of your transmit power now here's a close-up of the meter you want to be looking at the scale on the bottom here when I key up in a second you'll see it flick over and uh, we're getting approximately about 40 watts just under 40 watts out of the 6900 n and then when i switch the matcher on to bring the swr down as you can see the power also drops and that drops to about 30 watts so we're probably losing around about 8 watts in transmit power and that is the cost of using the matcher tuner that power is being sort of used if you like burnt up inside the matcher itself as you can see unless your swr is getting dangerously high there's no point in really using the meter you're better off just using all of your transmit power and you know finally just one more example here i'll simulate a very high swr and use the tuner to match it um, as you can see the uh, transmit is well into the red here this could reflect power back to my radio and this could damage the output transistors in my radio and cause damage so again we're just going to adjust it down using the uh, matcher now i won't be able to achieve a one-to-one -one here because it's too high but i can certainly get it below 1.5 and make things safe to transmit right gonna uh, bring this video to a close i don't want it to become a massive epic one and then you're, <laughs> and you're all falling asleep on me uh, to buy these these are pretty much available from any sort of radio outlet here in the uk price wise top end is over 55 pounds dropping down to approximately 45 pounds i imagine these are probably sell a little bit cheaper if you're in the us of a um are they worth that well not quite so sure to be honest i mean the accuracy isn't particularly great not the most accurate sort of meter in the world um so targi cb stuff it's okay the build quality is okay but uh, personally you know I, I tracked a couple of these down uh, boxed used on ebay and i think i paid less than 25 pounds sort of each but of course i do know that people like to buy new gear incidentally if you've already got an swr meter and you just want the uh, matching features well so targi do a much cheaper smaller inline box which just gives you uh, that capability without all of the other gubbings so anyway there you go I'm gonna say you're gonna bring this one to a close now I hope I've explained that okay what a antenna match or an antenna tuner is I mean to be honest you know three years ago I didn't know myself I remember my mate Sean making a little video for me to sort of try to explain it so I could sort of get my head around it you know that's how we all learn you know any other equipment that you sort of see me use on my videos if you want to few you want more details about that you know just let me know in the comments and when I get time I'll knock out a video for you but uh, as for now as always thanks for sticking with the video your view time is uh, always welcome please hit that thumbs up button because I then I know that you're actually liking the videos if you hasn't already done so of course your usual stuff hit that subscribe hit that little bell notification and all that jazz anyway uh, but as for now I'd like to say cheers thanks for watching of course stay safe and I'll catch you all on the next one